In the first pathway, we suggested you take a look at a video called The Product Owner in a Nutshell. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about the role of the product owner. So the product owner owns the vision and maximizes the value of the product that we are uh, building. Um, certainly they're a glue between the team, the stakeholders and the users. They need to be emotionally intelligent leaders um, and servant leaders in many cases as well. And they are ultimately the decision makers. Uh, but they need to be the decision makers that do so, make decisions with buy-in from everyone else. So it's quite an interesting role. And we often ask ourselves, well, who actually wants to be a product owner? These are some of the things that we think about um, as we think about identifying a good product owner. They become the epicenter of uh, the outcome that we that is emerging. They're influencing and driving the value that is being created and they are the chief diplomat. They're good at working with everyone's secondary motivations. Uh, it's fairly easy for us to get the primary motivation sorted out because that should be the goal of the team. But we need to also understand the secondary motivations because if those are out of alignment um, or if anybody's secondary motivation can't be satisfied by working in the team, then we may need to make some changes. A product owner needs to be really good at moving seamlessly between the 30,000 foot view and, and right down into the detail and, and move between those um, with um, no effort at all. They need to be extremely comfortable with ambiguity um, and they need to encourage self-organization and self-organizing teams. Uh, they, they are not the boss. Uh, the product owner is never the boss, um, never telling people what to do. The product owner is merely uh, facilitating of the work and making sure that the work is best. They need to be really good problem solvers and they need to know how to help others solve problems. So it's quite a tall order um, to be a product owner um, and, uh, and something that is a very exciting role uh, if it's something that you feel you're up to. The Scrum, the Scrum Guide, um, the 2020 definition um, of the product owner, it's always good to go back to the Scrum Guide and see what it's saying about all these things. The product owner, it says, is accountable for maximizing the value of the product resulting from the work of the Scrum team. So that's their primary um, accountability. But they're also accountable uh, for effective product backlog management. Now, interestingly, that, that fourth line there, um, they, they need to ensure that the product backlog is understood. And that's a really important part of this. It's no point having a product backlog and that it is transparent and visible. They need to make sure that everybody that is involved in creating the product understands uh, what is going on. And so communication is absolute key. And the other thing that is important is that the product owner is one person. It's not a committee. One question that I had at the beginning was, well, what is the product in product owner? And what is this idea that we're focusing on products rather than on projects, for example? Uh, and here is a list of the sorts of things that are products that are owned by a product owner. So you, you get the idea there. It's pretty much anything. It's um, We're just looking at this through the lens of Scrum, through the lens of Agile. Uh, so we also talk about the evolution of a product owner. Um, Scrum.org have produced this and it's, it's really interesting that at the beginning, if we're not very confident as product owners, are we a receiving product owner or an initiating product owner? And as you see there, um, some product owners are merely scribes or proxies um, and, and I've, I've been in a situation where I've worked with some of those. I've also worked with people who are the business representatives or even the sponsor. But really, we want to get people in the position where they are the entrepreneur, where they own that whole project, that whole product, so that they can um, deliver and make that happen and deliver that um, as best as possible. Again, it's not a, it's a tall order, this um, being a product owner. It looks um, fairly simple from the outside when you read the Scrum Guide, maybe really simple, but um, actually quite a lot to it, which is it makes it exciting.
Uh, certainly the key diplomat, the facilitator, the consensus leader. And I think it's important there that you are a leader by consensus uh, because you need to make sure that the team, the users um, and the stakeholders are all buying into what it is, uh, what your, your vision is and what it is that you're doing. And you need to be listening to them very, very closely and very carefully to make sure that what you are proposing um, gets that buy-in. One way to deal with any conflicts or any tensions that may exist, for example, between um, the user and the stakeholder, is to facilitate the conversation directly between those two um, sets of individuals or those two groups. Um, sort of, so rather than spending a lot of time going backwards and forwards and trying to represent what each other are saying, what I like to do is put the people in the room um, and facilitate and orchestrate the conversation so that they can find out where they are. Sometimes a stakeholder will want one thing, the team will tell you that they can't do it, the user is demanding something else. And again, just bring all those together um, and build a consensus. Um, and you, all you need is a consensus for the next sprint, um, because then we will have an opportunity to look at what we've created, look at the product, uh, everybody looks at it together, we decide whether that's where the direction that we want to go in, and we continue on with the sprinting. So some of the character, uh, skills, characteristics, her skills, characteristics, um, are some of the traits and the mindset then of a uh, great product owner. I'm going to skip through these, uh, but these are things that you probably want to come back and uh, listen to, uh, look at um, and ponder on each one separately um, in your own time. Um, certainly the ability to determine and assign value, um, absolutely critical, um, and having a clear product vision. Uh, being confident and articulate, something that I'm sometimes failing when I'm doing some of these videos, but being confident and articulate is very, very important, um, and being emotionally intelligent. Uh, being a great communicator, a great coach, um, organized, collaborator, great at prioritizing the backlog. Now, when we're looking at the backlog, remember, although we are responsible for that product backlog, it doesn't mean that we are doing all the work into that product backlog. We need to be spending our time um, having conversations um, and then organizing that into the product backlog. Normally, a good business analyst um, will be able to support you with that, with that role. Um, works with clear and short user stories, so knows how to do that, um, and is great at teasing out questions, priorities, desires, and above all fears, what is it that is what is it that is stopping somebody from moving forward? And of course, you'll remember from that video in pathway one, um, the product owner in a nutshell, the most important word to learn as a product owner is the word no. So some of the traits and mindsets then, uh, so pragmatic, collaborative with everyone, um, enabling leadership, um, definitely need to be customer user focused. Uh, if you're in a situation that uh, the stakeholders um, are putting demands on what they think we should be building, um, and you and your team know that it's actually not the right thing, that maybe they want something else, one of the best ways to deal with that is to get empirical evidence, get data from the users, put options in front of the users, um, and they will tell you, the team, they'll tell you, the product owner, and you, the team, what it is that they want. You take that back to the stakeholders, and the stakeholders will drop it almost immediately. Um, they will drop that vanity feature that they are looking for. Just a little tip on how to deal with that. You've got to be outcome focused and of course you'll be a visionary. You need to be fairly decisive but again as I mentioned just a few seconds ago using empiricism, using data, not gut feel, not, um, not imagining things. It needs to be based on the real data which is why transparency is so very important. It's good to have really good clarity of thought um, and to be a, a promoting type person, an edifying type person. Um, it really helps if we have a low ego, um, and we've said this before, but being comfortable with ambiguity um, is also very, very important. There'll be people on your team that uh, are not comfortable with ambiguity, and one of your roles, together with your Scrum Master, is going to be to help those people to understand that there is certainty about what we're doing next, there may not be certainty about what we're doing in a month's time or two months' time, but at least we can get build that certainty for them. Help the different personalities in your team to know what to feel comfortable um, and to get the best out of them. And another thing that is important is learn to maximize the work not done. 
so often I've seen product owners who feel like their job is to fill up that that sprint backlog with as many things as possible so it's maxed out you know we can do 20 points in the sprint so they max that out and, um, and do all that one of the things that is important make sure that we are maximizing the work not done it's one of the uh, principles of the agile manifesto uh, so what do we do? We are owning the vision, uh, we are maximizing value, we are the, the glue between the team, the stakeholders and the users, we're emotionally intelligent um, and we are the decision makers but with buy-in, just a summary of what we do. And here are some resources that may help you with that. Um, I'll put this up on the screen for a second, I'll put the list, this list also into the, um, into the text below so you can see these. Um, but we have here some books, um, some videos uh, and, and a few other items ideas, things that will just help you uh, with that process. You'll see there that on the shoe I've put a number of article, uh, books and articles which relate to the exactly what you do with the frameworks and so on. With Har I'm talking more about leadership and with Re I'm talking about influence. Um, the, the sort of three key things that we need to do to become good product owners. And also we will post a product owner one pager um, that you'll be able to um, uh, print out uh, and use to help get you started. I hope this is helpful. Um, there's a lot to it as you can see, um, but I do hope that you enjoy your journey as much as I have.